Hello there, my name is Jeff Lars, and we are back in the wonderful world of Holodrum with our good friend Steve. And Steve, last time he uh, got started on his little quest and opened up this little dead tree here, so I think it's time that Steve sort of backs his way in there. To level 1, Gnarled Root Dungeon. First dungeon of the game, folks. It's uh, pretty pretty standard for your for your first dungeon in a Zelda game. It's very simple. Uh, no, not too much to say about it. Just a bunch of really easy puzzles. Let's go up here first and talk to this old guy. So there's sort of a theme of progressing for realsies in the dungeon. So there are going to be a bunch of unlit torches around, and we're going to need to light them somehow. Currently, Steve is not equipped to do that, so we're going to have to find something that gives us the power of fire. Which I should be able to find in this place. Alright, so up here we got these two empty torches, or empty torches, unlit torches. Can't really do too much with them for now. So we'll come back to those later. Just keep them in mind. And we already got our key, so we don't need to push that block again. We'll just go. There we go. And here we have another kill room, filled with the exact same enemies as before. It's going to be a bit of a theme in the Seasons games. There's a lot of a lot of kill rooms. Or kill everything rooms. But hey, it's the dungeon map. So let's take a look at this place. Uh, definitely looks sort of like a root, I guess. But the interesting feature about this dungeon is, is actually the layout is almost identical. I think it actually almost might be even completely identical to that of the first dungeon in the original Zelda for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So... It's kind of a throwback. The dungeon item is even in the same place. A little bit of a spoiler. Yes, there's a dungeon item. And that's, I just always found that pretty cool. Definitely a lot of throwbacks to the Zeldas of old in this game. So I will do my best to point those out. I'll try and look them up before, beforehand. So again, to the left, we got some unlit torches you can't deal with. But up here, we have one of the new features in the Oracle series. Which are these nice minecarts. Basically, Link is, invul or is invincible while he's in them, and will kill everything he runs into. Uh, you can also slash your sword while you're in it. Uh, I think they're I think they're a pretty neat neat addition to the game. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm partial to the minecarts. I don't really know why. Anyways, over in this room we got a little bit of a puzzle. And I don't think it's too difficult of a puzzle. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, I think I think we got it. There we go. And up here we got a chest which will net us a gash seed. Now, there are plenty of rooms like this in all the dungeons where you get something like a Gasha Seed or a Ring. They are all completely optional, but if you're in need of need of a Gasha Seed or want a new spiffy ring to try out, definitely worth worth looking at. Usually there there's some pretty simple puzzle to deal with. Nothing too nothing too crazy. Alright, the other the other dungeon standby we just got was the compass works similarly to the compass in Link's Awakening. When you're in a new room and there's a key inside, it will give a little little bleeping sound. I'll probably display that in a couple couple of rooms. I know there's a key coming up. And thankfully whenever you get the compass, it doesn't give you that long, crazy message that it gave back in back in Link's Awakening. There it is. Same sound. Pretty pretty simple stuff. Alright, so we just gotta run past this trap here. Or prevent the trap from hitting us. Snag a key. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too taxing quite yet. Anyways, I believe there's a treasure chest back down here to the left. So let's just go ahead and have Steve snag that unnecessary heart. There we go. We got ten bombs. Now these are not the dungeon item. <laughs> Uh, you could buy bombs in the at the shop earlier. We just didn't quite have enough rupees to buy a shield and bombs, so we just went with bombs, or we went with the shield because we get free bombs here. And clearly, a cracked wall up there. Like in all Zelda games, bomb the wall. Nothing too, again, nothing too terribly crazy. Ooh. Good work, Steve. Let's see if we can. There you go. This, this room is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult part of this <laughs> this dungeon. It's really not that tough. But we do have our first mini-bosses here. The 
red and blue, I believe they're Garayas, so another throwback to the original Zeldas. Uh, okay, doing, doing well to start off. My suggestion for fighting these guys is sort of stay to the side of them, and don't do what I'm doing, because, well, you'll probably die, but focus your attacks on one of them, and once one dies, the other goes too, because clearly one can't live without the other. So, wrong button. Just want to put the shield back on. Not a difficult mini boss. I took far more hits there than I should have. Alright. So, down these stairs, if you play the original Zelda, you should know what to expect down here. And that's our dungeon item. Which is something that wasn't in the original Zelda, so that's pretty nice. We got the seed satchel. With 20 ember seeds inside. So, with those 20 ember seeds, I'm sure we can light up the torches. Now, seed satchel is probably one of the most memorable items of this of this series. The seed Satchel is found in both Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, and it holds all sorts of seeds, which sort of serve as your... serve as multi-purpose tools, I suppose. Because there are a ton of different types of seeds, and make for, make for a good bit of variety. I, I like the Seed Satchel. I just kind of wish the... Uh, that it was handled a little bit better in terms of inventory management. But we'll, we'll complain about that later. So let's uh, go ahead and light things up here. There we go. So the old man was not lying when he said, Light the torches and your path will be revealed. Something like that. Anyways, I'm just gonna... See if I can burn one of these mob ones. Nope. Ouch. Ouch. Alright, trying, trying too hard here. Let's just... Let's quit goofing. Enough playing around, Steve. And we got the boss key already. What are we, like, five minutes in? A little more than that? I don't know, I haven't really been paying attention to time. But anyways, now that we have the boss key and the ember seeds, we can head back towards those unlit torches we were at earlier, because if you take a look at the map, the boss is over on the right side of the dungeon. So, I'm going... Oh, forgot the puzzle. There we go. Let's go ahead and take them on. I'm just going to ignore these... Stalfos. I don't need to deal with them. And this room introduces an enemy that was not present in Link's Awakening, and it is the Floor Masters. I believe they're Floor Masters, because they're coming out of the floor. But if they grab you, they won't do any damage, but they will teleport you back to the beginning of the dungeon, which is rather unpleasant. There we go, we got our first ring. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the ring shop. What you get is a bunch of unidentified rings, and you have to bring them to the ring shop to get them identified. And... I believe it costs around 20 rupees to identify them, so it's not, not too pricey. They're pretty... Oh. And there's what happens if you get grabbed by a floor master. Man, I've been doing a great job in this series so far, I mean... Steve and I are just, just make such a good team, you know? Gotta... Gotta get grabbed by floor masters and wrecked by easy mini-bosses. Five bucks says I'll die on the first boss. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Judging by how I've been playing recently. Alright, let's be a little more careful this time. I'm one of those kind of guys who can't really move on until all the floor or wall masters are dead. But there are some rooms later in the game that I will not be able to do that. Anyways, first boss here. Which is Giant Dragon Dude. I cannot remember the name, I think it starts with an A. But he's really simple. You just slash his face. When it's when his horn glows red, he's about to fire. And this is also a throwback to the original Zelda game because I believe the first boss there was pretty similar to this guy. Ouch. I would I would watch out for that if I were you. When you're when you're playing this on your own. Steve just wants to get this done though, he's he's not here to Oh man. I have not seen him do that many charges in a row, to be honest. It's catching me off guard. Alright, Steve, let's see if we can finish it up now. Come on. There we go. Not too difficult. Got kinda, kinda beat up, though. Anyways, got our first heart container. As with most Zelda games, getting a heart container after a boss means your life increases a little bit. But that's all... It's all kinda meaningless, because what we got here... It's our first essence of nature. Fertile soil. And 
And with that, Dungeon 1, the Gnarled Root Dungeon, has been completed. Alright, well, it looks like the Maku tree is telling Steve that, you know, hey, you should go find that Temple of Seasons that fell down. But we're gonna have to save that till next time, because both Steve and I we need a break after such a taxing, taxing dungeon. So, next time we will make our way to the Temple of Seasons, maybe make our way to the second dungeon, see, see how much we can get done. But, till then, Steve's just gonna hide behind the shield, and I'm gonna go take a nap. See you guys later.